July 17th, uh, 1988 was very, very special. All of the industry paid tribute to Ricky. We called it a little sugar. Uh, Barry Newman produced it. A lot of people wanted to be in it. In fact, uh, so many people that it would have been four days long had they all been in the show. So there was an unedited version and an edited version for television, which uh, was an hour television show. But we decided we should put on this tape, we should put the unedited version on that shows uh, the complete night. And then a little later we'll show the edited version. So here is the unedited version of A Little Sugar. Ladies and gentlemen, in particular, members of his family who are here from New Zealand, most of them good rugby supporters as well, whom I saw outside. It's lovely to have you here. It's my privilege tonight to just make one or two observations about Ricky May. And I think that many things have been said about him during his lifetime. It's been said that he was a heavyweight talent. It's been said that he was a man of outsize ability, a big man with a big voice. We, of course, remember him as more than that, as a singer, a songwriter, a man who was internationally acclaimed as a cabaret performer, and of course, latterly in his life, as an actor who achieved very significant acclaim in Guys and Dolls. But of course, one of the great features about Ricky May was that he was a man who could laugh at himself. I was amused to read when I was looking at some of the things that Ricky May has said, that he said of himself that he was more than a mouth in search of a donut. <laughs> he said he was always amused when he went on stage that because he was the fat guy, he said, they always seemed to think that I was the comedian. But he said, you don't have to be skinny and good looking to deliver the goods. Yeah. Ricky May. Yeah. Tonight is really not a night for biographies. Ricky wouldn't want to be idealized in death beyond what he was in life. But in life, of course, he was a great man. And a man who, when he saw suffering or disappointment, he sought to alleviate it. When he saw unhappiness, he sought to correct it. And he was the youngest of seven children, Ricky May, of a Maori family, a father who played alto sax, and a mother who was a pianist. And he made his mark originally in an Auckland dance band, which was called Kochi May and the Rhythm Rascals. It was, it was, you'd have to say, at best, a very humble beginning. But then, of course, through all his success, he was a humble man, a man in spite of his talent of immense social conscience, epitomised by the work that he did over a long period of time for charity and especially through the Variety Club. I was interested to note that on more than one occasion, Ricky lamented the fact that the nightclub scene was dying out. He said, we no longer have places with any atmosphere. He said, we're asked to perform now in big barn-like places where music is second to booze and pokies. He was a man who embodied, a man who embodied the language of music, a man who embodied the language of music, a man who engendered affection and love amongst all those whose privilege it was to come in contact with him. And tonight, of course, we honour such a man. We're aware of his great talents and his great achievements. We know of him as a great cabaret performer. One reviewer said about one of his performances at the Don Burroughs Supper Club that he was a man who inspired chaos and great music. On one hand, he said he was a nightmare. And here they, like, they must be some of his backing musicians because he, Ricky was a bloke who'd sort of called to the audience for a number that they'd like him to sing. And the backing musicians would tremble at the knees, wondering if they were going to be equal to the task. Of course, he always was. He could sing anything off the top of his head and sing it well. And of course, we remember Guys and Dolls, as nicely, nicely, Johnson, sit down, you rock on the boat. And of course, it became... <laughs> it, became something, it became something of a signature tune. And tonight is such a night, I think, when we'll walk down the various memory lanes that Ricky has created for us, and we'll be able to live through those great moments that he enjoyed. He had a dream about music. 
And his dream was that one day he said, I'd like to walk down the streets of Sydney and Melbourne and I'd like to hear music, live music, coming out of every cafe and every restaurant. And he said, when I hear that, I'll know that the city is alive. It's to be hoped that we're... It's to be hoped that at some time in the future we're equal to the realisation of that dream. But at all times, the sense of humour was forever present. He once said, if there's a nice sandwich, it doesn't matter what's happening, take the sandwich. Everything else will wait, but the sandwich will start to spoil. <laughs> Later on in his career in Australia, he became an Australian. He wanted to do that for the sake of Colleen and Shaney, but he remained a Maori at heart. And he released an album called Citizen, which was about a Maori taking up Australian citizenship. It was just at the time before the America's Cup, but he said, if the Kiwis win the America's Cup, I'll call it ex-citizen. <laughs> they didn't win the America's Cup. He didn't call it ex-citizen. Finally, I think, there was something very precious about Ricky May. Through all the charity and through all the generosity, there was something of the romantic about him. He was a man who lived his life on the edge. And I was thinking today that life and history and literature in the romantic tradition are best exemplified by some English poets, one of whom we all know as Wordsworth. And he wrote a poem about a solitary reaper. And in the poem, the solitary reaper is heard by Wordsworth to be singing in the field. And he said of the song, he said it was a voice so thrilling, ne'er was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird. And in contemplating that solitary reaper, Wordsworth said, as he left it, the music in my heart I bore long after she was seen no more. With Ricky May, I think it's fair to say that the music he made will remain with us long after Ricky May has passed from us. Another of those romantic poets, Shelley, said this, music, when sweet voices die, vibrates in the memory. Odours, when sweet violets sicken, live within the sense they quicken. Ricky May, through his whole career, made us vibrate with music. He quickened our senses in a very special way. And while we honour him tonight, Colleen and Shaney, as we do, we honour him because we love him. We'll never ever be able to return to our community the love that he gave and the pleasure he gave and the caring and compassion that he engendered. But there's a very special message I'd just like to offer to you, Colleen, tonight and to all your friends and your family who've come to be with all these people tonight who love Ricky May. And it's a simple message. And I'd simply say to you, that no one ever dies until the memories of them fade away. And the memories of Ricky May will live on long after tonight is forgotten. And <laughs> so Colleen and Shaney, in that very special sense, Ricky is alive and with us tonight. And in our hearts, he'll be alive and with us forever. We'll be back in a moment when a very special show will begin. Well, 
as we've reached this point, I think it is very fitting to say, as he would say, a little sugar for the act. Well, it's a very nice day. Nice light. Sound. Beautiful. And the best musicians that you could get anywhere. Let's hear it. Yeah. So, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you to Ricky, a wonderful man, a wonderful person, and what more can I say? You'd never make it Woo! with all your wild ideas. But this guy from Only Hunger really set them on their ears. We knew you'd always make it. Beautiful. We knew what you could do. So here's our special tribute. Ricky Boy, this night's just for you. Give it all if I could guest on television. I'd give it all to be on Hey Hey Saturday night. Just to stand there with Daryl and Isaiah Ostrich waiting to throw a line and get some crazy goofy Hey Hey would be fine. I've seen them all around the world and I can't tell you Hey Hey's different. And I'm not really sure why I'd give it all Just to be a guest on Hey Hey Saturday night Daryl and Ozzy Give me a try I see my pictures and papers And comedy capers And words that the show can't deny A triple raffle From wonderful Hey Hey's gone by Blackman's River, Machine Gun and Blibber, and Wilbur, what words can't explain? Jackie's the pal is everyone's pal. They say she's sane. Listen, Ostrich, won't you be a pal and call me? I know the list of guests must be extremely long. Boy, I'd give it all just to be a guest on Hey Hey on Saturday night. Give me a try Oh, I thought I'd get tricky So I thought I'd uh, stick it uh, Throw a little bit of loony and rhyme At a pinch I said I'd be in Master Slime The show is outrageous Completely contagious I said, spin me a line And if there's a name with a card No claim Make it mine Listen, Darrow Won't you be a pal and call me I know that this love guest must be extremely long. Wouldn't you like to be on Hey Hey? Just a chance to be on Hey 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 on Saturday night. Daryl and Ozzy and Jackie and Wilbur and Red and Black and whole gang's gonna come along. Ooh, oh, I just got to say. only guest on television.
was a man, a lonely man, who lived his life through his indifference. He stood alone. His life, his own And slowly died Within his silence Now solitaire's the only game in town And every road that takes me, takes me down by myself it's easy to pretend I'll never love again and keeping to myself I play the game while life goes on around me just the same people all around me everywhere but it's solitaire The great only yesterday I was cheerful, bright and gay 
Looking forward to who can do the role I was about to play. Just to knock me down, reality, reality came around. And without so much as a mere touch, cut me into little pieces. Leaving me to doubt, talk about God and His mercy. And if He really does exist, then how? Desert me. May as well go home as I did on my own. So again, alone again. I can't leave. Living this without you, I can't give. I can't give. I can't give anymore. I can't live. Can't live in this without you. I can't give. I can't give anymore. Solitude's the only game in town. That takes me, takes me down By myself, it's easy to pretend You're coming home again Yeah, well, um, a young guy that come from New Zealand a couple of years back, and uh, we worked together for quite some time. And uh, in my humble opinion, I think he's uh, one of the swingest singers ever to come over from New Zealand. And uh, well, he just swings, and he's a guy. He's only a well, a baby as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I feel like uh, Dorian Gray, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> No, he's silly. He's uh, only about 19 to 20, and uh, he's a real swing and singer and a gas guy. And uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the man of the day, Mr. Ricky May. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, you're pretty. Oh, this shot, babe. Has such steep dead, and he shows them pearly white, just a jackknife. So Mac Heath, baby, and he keeps it out of sight. You know when that shark bait bites with his teeth there, scarlet billows, well it starts to spread. But fancy gloves, though, with old Mac Heath there. So there's never, never a trace of red. Uh-huh, on a sidewalk, Sunday morning, uh-huh. Lies of body, just twos and lines. Someone sneaking around the corner. 
Could that someone perchance be Mac the Nile? Let's cook! There's a tugboat down by the river, don't you know? Where the seamen bags just are driven on down. You know the seamen's there, it's there for the way there. Father's gonna get you ten. Mr. Maggie's back in town. Come on, hear that Louis Miller. He disappeared there after drawing out all of his hard earned cash. Now Maggie spends like a sailor. Could it be our boy, Don Southern Rats? One time, you hear that Jimmy Diver, little Suki Tor. Look out for Miss Lolly Lynn, yeah. You gotta walk it over Lucy Brown. Well, now the line bones, it's there on the right, babe. Hey, now that Maggie, he's back in town. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Look out, old Maggie. Look out, old Maggie is back. Back in in time oh, yeah. Thank you. Bless you. Good evening. When they, when they asked me to do this, actually it was last week, my agent phoned me up. I have no idea where he got my number. <laughs> and they said, they said, we want you to do some jokes on Ricky May. And I thought, how can half of you laugh about something that makes the other half of you cry? And they said, well, we've got this idea. And we've checked it out with Colleen and Shane. So I went along with it. Hello? Is that? Is that heaven? <laughs> Who? I, I, I'm talking to God. Yeah, well, my name is Doyle, and I want to speak to Ricky May. Pardon? <laughs> what? What do you mean he's not there? <laughs> ah. He's out doing a charity show. Well, you see, I wanted to tell him about tonight. He knows about tonight. What did he say? $120 was too cheap. <laughs> what do you mean he doesn't think you're God? I mean, why doesn't he think... Oh, you don't look like Norm Erskine. <laughs> Already he's made changes? Well, God, what changes has he made up there? Uh-huh. You're wearing a golf hat. <laughs> St. Peter's barracking for the old blacks. <laughs> and the heavenly choir is outside singing, sit down, you're rocking the boat. <laughs> God. Why can't the heavenly choir come through the pearly gates? Uh-huh. Ricky keeps changing keys. <laughs> I 
I, I want, he wants you to cancel the day of judgment. He hates talent quests. <laughs> God, I mean, what? Well, why would he want to meet the devil? To see if he really is the guy in charge of sound at the entertainment center. <laughs> You're kidding me, God. How could he possibly influence Adam and Eve? The forbidden fruit? They're smoking it. He's what? Has he done it? He's done a gig in heaven? A television special for the Catholics, huh? <laughs> well, what do they call it, God? Well, what else? Hey, hey, it's Sunday. <laughs> and he's going to do a new production of Jesus Christ Superstar? Original cast. No, I'm, I'm sorry, God, I don't know Harry Miller's phone number. <laughs> He's asked you to what? To give television a kiwi flavor? Well, how are you going to do that, God? Ah, good morning, Australia becomes hello, Bondi Junction. <laughs> and you've renamed 60 Minutes? Now is the hour. Uh, <laughs> I, you've got to go, God. Oh, I, you what? You've got Ricky's application form for heaven? God, I, I know that's personal, but can you tell me what's on it? Name? Ricky Ernest May. Occupation? Friend? Address? Wherever he was needed? Result, he gave the world a little bit of sugar. God, that, that's, that's beautiful, God. And we all know it's true, so can I ask you one other question? Just one more question, God. Why did you take him? Why did you take him so young? You what? You lost it. You lost it? Oh. God lost it, and he needed Ricky to make another mold. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, in a neat little cottage, lived with three bears. One was a daddy bear, one was a mommy bear, one was a wee bear. And one day they went a walking. Went through the deep woods, came a stalker, a little girl with crazy green hair. Green hair. Her name was Moldy Locks. Green hair. 
still gets a big laugh in Only Hunger. And upon that door she knocks, but no one was there. So she sat right down and had a bowl of porridge, cause this girl was no square. She got sleepy, grabbed the bed upstairs, and went home, 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 came three beds. Who's been eating my porridge up? Eat my porridge up. Hey, Bob, we Bob said, little wee bit, some scum broke my chair. Who's been sitting in my chair? Said that daddy bear. Who's been sitting in my chair? Said that mama bear. Hey, Bob, we Bob said, little wee bit, some scum broke my chair. Skin, la ba ba do ba da, la ba. Mama bear. Hey, Bob, we Bob said, little wee bit, some scum broke my chair. Get back. Get back, get back, back, you belong. Hey, Bobby, 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 Hang on a second. Shoopy do. Come on, guys. It's easy. <laughs> She do 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 B flat on me. Oh! Thank you. They're a Martha Stone Age family. From the town of Bedrock, we'll have a yabba dabba do time, a dabba do time. We'll have a game. Oh, where would we be without kids TV? Where would we be without kids? Where would they be with nothing to see? Just imagine a kid without a TV. They'd never be home. Who knows where they'd roam after skipping and playing hopscotch? Where would we be without kids' TV? There'd be nothing for parents to watch. Gather around, kids. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart about kids' television here. It's sort of being pushed back into the background for too long. I mean, could you imagine a world without kids' television? No. Could you get by without Mr. Squiggle? No. Could you get by without, come on kids? No! Could you get by without Playroom? No! What about the greatest kid show of all? News World with Robbo? No! <sighs> Sorry, Graham. You'd never be home. Who knows where you'd roam after skipping and playing hopscotch? Where would we be without kids TV? There'd be nothing for parents to Mickey Mouse Club. For you and me, M I C K E Y M O U S E. Hey there, hi there, ho there! I'm as happy as can be. Goodbye, M I C K E Y M O U S E. Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. Forever, let us hold our banner high, 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 high. Come along and sing. 
like a song in John the Jamboree. M I C K E Y M O U S E. Uh, 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 uh. There's a bear in there and a chair as well. There are people with games and stories to tell. Come inside, open wide. It's play school. It's play school. What a funny old fella is Humphrey. He gets in a matter of strife. He leads a very exciting life. And honey is his favorite advice, which is hardly so very surprising. He's a really amazing old bear. Oh, honey, 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 honey for the Humphrey. He's Humphrey the fun loving top cat. Clouds away On my way to where the air is sweet Won't you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street It's over there even though the sign's pointing that way How does she do it? Upon a star makes no difference who you are when you wish upon a star your dream. folks. What a night. My name is Alan Corb, uh, but please call me Corby. We're all friends here tonight, I think. We will be at the end anyway. Uh, I'm out here just to sort of share a few, few Ricky stories with you, a little anecdotes and things. Like, look at this house here, 1,600. See, you heard him? 
1,600 people and I have to do his material. I can't believe it. <laughs> Not used to working in these big crowds. The last time I worked, I think there were six people in the crowd. It upset me. I had to stop the show. I said, do you mind telling me why you came here tonight? These people looked at each other, then got up and left. <laughs> Please don't move. It makes me nervous. It's good to be here anyway. Huh? This little story concerns um, the end of 1986. It was the last show of the season for the Darrell Summer Show, Hey Hey It's Saturday. Ricky was supposed to present Darrell on the show with a gift basket. French champagne, lots of goodies. But on the day, nobody had heard from Ricky, nobody had seen him. About two minutes before the end of the show, in dashes Ricky into the studio, grabs the basket and walks onto the set. Now, he was supposed to say to, to Daryl, Daryl, this is for you. But instead, we'll have a look at this. Hey, hey look, here's the surprise. I'm sure. Here's the surprise. Oh, look at it's this. the Mary. Uh, look, hey, with all Ricky. due respect. Can I have a look at this? Whispering Jack doesn't need any help. The yeah. album that does need help is. <laughs> that's the album that needs a lot of help. Oh, well, no, it's the other side. We don't, yeah, but we didn't really have, I know, but that's, that's, I did that. Oh, you did oh, that. Very right. nice. Oh, oh what a Christmas feeling, it's the Christmas feeling. And, and when the cover's finally done, it'll look like that. And that's your record, and is it out when? Well, it's not out yet. Hold it up, you, you, keep you get mileage out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's out yeah. soon. Yeah. It's yeah. out there. Yeah. Whispering yeah. Jack is just yeah. the best album. And this is a little Christmas hamper for the musicians oh. that did such a wonderful yeah. job faking all year. Why? Who knows? I think he was a little embarrassed. Dale sort of went, oh, and that was it. At the end of the show, Dale said, Ricky, I have to go back to Sydney. I'm working tonight, but there's an end of, end of a season party in my office. Go and have a few drinks with everybody, which Ricky did. After a while, everybody split, and just, uh, just Ricky was left in the office, and, uh, and the basket was sitting there. <laughs> Don't get ahead of me, please. So Ricky thought, I'm not leaving it here, so he took the basket back to the hotel with him. <laughs> well, up in his room, he takes off the tag, the card that says to Daryl, and he gets a card and he writes on it. Now, let me just preface this. Petula Clark was staying in the hotel and working there also, so Ricky knew Petula. <laughs> so he wrote on the card to Petula, have a wonderful show tonight, love Ricky and had it sent to a room, you see. <laughs> and off he goes to his job. He comes back a little later to the hotel and somebody says, Ricky, Elton John's having a party in there. <laughs> no, don't, please, no, don't. <laughs> so Rick, Ricky goes in <laughs> and there's Elton John playing away at the piano, having a ball, everybody's swinging away. And sitting on top of the piano, Is the basket. <laughs> so during the course of the evening, Ricky has a quick peg, a quick look at the, at the card, and it says, Happy birthday, Elton. Love, Petula. <laughs> well, at the end of the night, Ricky's still there, the old stayer, only he's left, and the basket. So Ricky's gone to himself, I don't believe this. So he grabs the basket, he's walking through the foyer and he sees one of Elton John's musicians who he didn't know. So he's walked up to the basket, he's handed him the basket, he said, look, my friend, this is for you on one condition. You don't give it to anyone. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. Rainbows. 
have nothing to hide So we've been told And some choose to believe it I know their wrong way to see Someday we'll find it That rainbow connection The lover, the dreamer Spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes I'm longing to stray Right through the very
in your life you find her Someone who turns your heart around The next thing you know They're closing down the town Wake up and she's still with you Even though you're even clear across town You wonder who that someone is Say who I found When you get caught between the moon and New York City No, it's crazy it's crazy, but it's true. If you get caught between the moon and New York City, the best that you can do, 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 is fall in love. Little Arthur, he does what he pleases All of his life, his master's toy Yet deep in his heart, he knows He's really Dudley Moore You know that? He lived his life from day at a time Having himself a real good time You know what the people think No, they don't even show It's crazy, you bet it's crazy, but it's true, yes, so true. If you go between the moon and New York City, the best that you can do, the best that you can do, the best that you can do, the come best on, everybody, that you can do, the best that you can do, the best that you can do. Ha, the that you can do the best that you can do hey the best that you can do come on let's hear you sing now hey the best that you can do come on let's have you the best that you can do hey when you get caught between the moon and new york city i know it's crazy you bet it's crazy it's so true so very true if you get caught between the moon Come on. The best that you can do. The best that you can do. The very, very best. The very, very best. Forget about the rest. Forget about the rest. Do it do it Do it do it Do it do it Come on, let's hear it. Come on, let's do it. Do it 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 Yes, it's crazy, but it's so true. It's so true. One more time. Now, if you get between the moon and the sea, the best that you can do, the best that you come on, the best that you can do. Follow me. The dee 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 da. Is that the best that you can do? It's the best that you can do. Come on now. Oh, let's hear it for Ricky. Is that the best that you can do? Day, 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 oh, come on, day, oh, one more day, oh, day, oh, come on now, day, oh, so day, oh, oh. One more. They got started, didn't they, Jack? Do, do that bit again. Now. One, two, three. The best, best that, that you can do. do. Come on, let's hear you. The best that you can do. Come on. Well, a little bit of sugar. Yes, a sweet bit of sugar.
Que beauty. You fall in love. You gotta fall in love. Oh, oh, oh no, you cannot fall in love. About. Oh, Yes, indeed. Jackie Trent, Tony Hatch, good stuff. You getting hungry yet? Huh? Speaking of hungry, what's on the menu? Chicken, is it? Boneless chicken, my favorite. You ever seen those boneless chickens when they're alive? I don't know how they do it. Speaking of hunger, I don't think it would be too disrespectful to say that our friend Ricky if he didn't eat more than most, he may have eaten more often than most. We have a picture of our friend up there enjoying, and why not? People say to me sometimes, do you think Ricky was sensitive about his weight? Well, all I can say is this, I remember a while ago, Ricky was sitting in one of those big old armchairs at a friend's office, Just sitting in there, relaxing. This little boy was staring at him, couldn't take his eyes off Ricky, he was fascinated. Ricky took it for a little while and finally looked at his little kid and said, Hi, son. Tall, aren't I? <laughs> he was a merciful man. <laughs> remember when Ricky came back from London a few years ago? Remember this, Jamie? A few of us sitting around talking about what happened to him over there, and he was explaining to us how he'd been to a, a, a Harley and Harley Street uh, specialist. And he said the doctor had examined him and tested him and finally said, Mr. May, we can find no reason why you should have a weight problem. There was a bit of silence at this and one of the boys leaned over and said, Ricky, did the doctor happen to mention food? <laughs> but he, he was sneaky too. What about the little sugar from my friend over here, Jamie Rigg, who was Ricky's friend and uh, a musical director uh, ever since he was 17 years of age. Jamie Rigg, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a little extra sugar too for Mr. Art Phillips here. Uh, took over the new band when Jamie finished, and also the MD, Mr. Art Phillips. Yeah. Art, good on you. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie's got a million stories. He was telling me the other day, he and uh, he and Ricky were in Singapore, right, working this hotel, and they had separate rooms. And Jamie used to prefer to eat downstairs in the restaurant. Well, Ricky, uh, once Jamie left, called upon his favorite number, room service. <laughs> the king of the room service, are you joking? <laughs> and ordered uh, two dinners to be sent up to Ricky's room, one for him and one for Mr. Jamie Rigg. And when the waiter arrived with the trays, Ricky let him into the room, and then knock on the bathroom door and say, Jamie, dinner's here. For the waiter's sake, who knows, I don't know. <laughs> it would have gone on for weeks except one night room service called up Jamie and said, will you be having dinner with Mr. May's room again? <laughs> so he bubbled that way. <laughs> uh, what, remember the Mandarin Club, the restaurant we all used to go to after the shows, have something to eat, huh? Used to go there for food and insults. <laughs> Made a lot of stuff there. Erko was telling me, he, he and uh, Ricky and a few other boys, uh, who was there? there was, Two shot Tony Amaday. Give us two shots. And um, they've all ordered up anyway. Everybody's ordered big. Ricky's ordered two bowls of this particular soup that he liked. Anyway, the first bowl arrived and uh, that went. Second bowl arrived and still no other food. So Erko, Mr. Erskine, who was no slouch with a knife and fork, as we all know, well known, he got up and uh, rushed into the kitchen to find the waiter. And he said, what's your game? Or worse to that effect. 
It's a family show, you know. Yeah, I don't believe that. Well, I can't get fight. He said. <laughs> Sorry, Vicky. <laughs> He said, listen, Ricky's on his second bowl of soup, we got nothing. And the waiter said, he said, oh, he said, Ricky, give me $10 not to bring any food till he finished the second bowl of soup. <laughs> He'd give you a start and anything with the food, Ricky, I tell you. <laughs> the other time he was having a few drinks later night in one of the clubs. It was quite late, everybody had enough, but somebody said, come on, everybody, back to my place. And Erko said, come on, you're kidding. And Ricky said, come on, let's go. Yeah, good idea. And Norman said, come on, we've had enough to drink. And Ricky looked at him and said, he's got a fridge, hasn't he? <laughs> Bless him. I think Ricky summed it up, though, when he said to a very slim colleague once, <laughs> he said, inside me is a big man trying to get out. He said, but inside you is a skinny man saying, feed me. Feed me. <laughs> See you a little later. <laughs> Australia bound. Catching the unmistakable sound, Australia bound. Australian town, I'm watching to see what's going down under bound. I was born in a beautiful place. seems so strong I must be Catching the unmistakable sound, I strail you bound. Australian town, I'm watching to see what's going down under bound. Precious moments, memories I from another shore People's spaces stay the same to me They're just divided by an open sea You and me were born in a beautiful place Born into a beautiful race and it seems so strong Australia you bound Australian town I'm watching to see what's going down under bound Australia you bound Kia ora, Rick. 
Y te capo a capo mai te haki O en arangirunga o ti a mana e O ki mai, o ki mai I te waka e nga Kia tu tu ki te tu mana ko Ki te kapa, kapa mai te haki O e ngā rangi runga o ti amana e O kare kare ana ngā wai o roto rua Ki ti atu ko e hi
thanks. <laughs> okay, 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 my, okay, my. Uh, all right, yes, indeed, the maze. Good heavens, everyone a beautiful singer too. Oh, anybody inhale in here? What is this? Somebody said to me before the show, are you a bit nervous, Alan? <laughs> I laughed. Paranoid is the word, I think. It... I actually tried to join Paranoids Anonymous earlier on in the week, but uh, I couldn't find out where they meet. Oh yeah, you try and get a laugh now. Not easy for a Jewish boy, I tell you. Oh dear, oh dear. I wanted to talk about a couple of other things that Ricky was well known for. One, of course, was his golf, and the other one, the fact that Ricky did, um, did fancy himself as a bit of a punter. Scalzi? <laughs> he liked to have a bet. Just to give an example, he called up a friend in uh, Melbourne, a guy called Joe Paparoni, and Ricky said, uh, hey Joe, it's Ricky. I'm in a hotel in Perth, overlooking the Swan River. He said, for $20, which way is the ferry going? Towards me or away from me? <laughs> and, and Joe said, away from you. Ricky said, wrong, you owe me $20. <laughs> but of course he loved his golf, Ricky. If he didn't work so much, he'd have had a better handicap. <laughs> I think we got a clip of him having a little swing here. Have a look. Is that a rotten thing to do or what? I love it. <laughs> we used to get on the first tee at Moore Park and argue for 15 minutes. Who's betting what with who? Who's getting the shots from who? Used to get quite heated. If you ever had at Moore Park, look up on the golf club, just the house there on the wall, you'll see a slight smear. It's the remains of a pie that was thrown by a certain person. Frustrated, they're having to pay up to the boys again. I think Colleen enjoyed the fact that Ricky played golf. He got exercise, he got him out of the house. But every time he played golf, he used to come to Colleen and say, Collie, I need a hundred dollars to play golf with the boys. So one, one day Ricky said, what do you mean you want a hundred dollars? How come it costs a hundred dollars every time you play golf with the boys? And Ricky said, because I lose a hundred dollars to the boys every time I play golf. And Colleen said, yeah, but a hundred dollars? And Ricky said, what do you want me to do? Give him 20, owe him 80? <laughs> but even in the lean times, Ricky and Colleen seemed to have a good, uh, a good, good life. Just after they first arrived in London, uh, Ricky called up a good friend in Sydney, Basil Ward, and said, you know, things are a bit slow here, not much happening at the, you know, in the beginning. So the next, uh, next day, Baz thought, hey, he pictured all the things happening, you know, a bit cold, a bit hungry. So he sent over a few dollars. But a day after that, two days after that, Ricky called up and said, thanks for the money, Baz. Collie and I had a great night in Paris. <laughs> but as most of you know, everybody was welcome at the May household, wherever they were. That applied also in London. That's Patriot Aussies, especially showbiz people. One morning, about seven o'clock, Ricky and Cole were asleep. They'd only had an hour's sleep, they had a heavy night. The phone rang, it was some old showbiz friends from Australia. Let's just call them the Gandhi brothers for the sake of the argument. Hi, Cole. Hello. <laughs> Where's Rick? Oh, hold on, darling, I'm still a little bit asleep. She covered the phone up. Ricky, Ricky. You ever try and wake Ricky up? Ricky. It's the Gandhi brothers from Australia, they wanna know where you are. Ricky's still asleep. He said, oh, look, tell him I'm working, you know. So Collie said, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, darling. Yeah, Ricky's away working. So I said, oh, really? Where's he working? So Collie said, oh, just a minute. It's a bit cold. I'll put something on. Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> they want to know where you're working. Now, one of the most obscure places Ricky had worked up to then was the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik. Thought he was safe. So he said, oh, tell him I'm in Reykjavik. So Collie said, he's away working in Reykjavik. And the Gandhi brothers went, Reykjavik? Great, we open there tomorrow. <laughs> the 
But he did love a bet. I can still picture him in the Rest Point Casino saying to Colleen, what do you mean you lost $60? And Colleen saying, yeah, well, you lost 600 And Ricky saying, yeah, but I know how to gamble. <laughs> Who was that announcer, huh? He finished the show in the casino one night and he went into the, uh, out of the showroom into the casino to have a drink at the bar and there was a massive power failure in Hobart and all the lights went out. Well, everybody's baser instincts came to the fore. There was pandemonium. There were people grabbing money off the tables, <laughs> off of the bar. of my heart, yes she did. Oh, the sporty soul to the dock of the bay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bobby Holly's Peggy Sue. Remember him this way. Who I love every time I ever seen a way. Of the way she may get weary, women do get weary wearing that shabby dress. Mama Castle, what a gas! Oh, yeah. If she was here today, Mama Castle, what a gas! If she was
I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think Where the hell are the strings? It's a fantastic, fantastic clip, isn't it? You know, there are some people who think that Ricky May is gone. Some people think Ricky May is gone, just like that. But don't listen to them. I was across in Perth a couple of months back at, uh, with Ricky at the Appealathon. He does Appealathons, still does Appealathons. Makes a lot of money, makes a lot of music, makes a lot of laughs. Still the fresh faced Kiwi kid who came across the Tasman 25 years ago with energy and with talent to burn on bandstand and every outstanding band in the land. Ricky May is not gone. He's still with us. He's still the music man. He's still doing very nicely, nicely. In fact, I saw him just last Christmas, last Christmas Eve, down in Melbourne. He was doing Carols by Candlelight. He does it every year. You can't imagine Carols by Candlelight without Ricky. When you think of this man, he's not the sort of bloke who just comes and goes. If there are songs to be sung, if there are dances to be danced, if there are gigs to be gigged, just like the hat, you can count on Ricky May. The kids will always be behind him because he's always been behind the kids, making them laugh, having lots of fun. It's easy to laugh with Ricky May, he just makes you laugh. He's as generous as Santa Claus and as genial as Humphrey B. Bear. And in the children's charity business, they called him Dr. Yes because he could never say no. With Ricky May, it really is a wonderful world. Bob Barnard. Bob's a friend of Ricky's, aren't we all? As Ray said, Ricky is with us this evening, but unfortunately not standing beside us. For those of you not in show business, spare a thought for the the actors, producers, directors, musicians, dancers, and compares who haven't got Ricky standing beside them. He was great with other people. He made people in show business feel so much bigger and better than they really were, simply because he was there. He's the sort of manager well know that loved everybody. Or even those people he didn't love, he liked. He couldn't hate. And tonight, without him physically being here, as you know, the world is a very sad place. Let me paraphrase the famous song of Ricky's. And for all of us, we're thinking to ourselves, what a wonderful guy.
in this day and age we're living in. I sometimes think of Mr. Einstein's theory, but the fundamental things still apply as time goes by. You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss A sigh is still a sigh The fundamental things apply As time goes by Lovers woo, they still say I love you. On that you can rely. No matter what the future brings, as time goes by. Give me moonlight and love song. full of passion, jealousy and hate. Woman needs man, and man must have his mate that nobody can deny. Still the same old story, fight for love and glory. Case of do or die, but the world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. on piano, please. Thank you for being here. Good night and bless you. Thank you. Charlie, you got my money. I won it fair and square. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Hey, you like playing games, don't you? Yeah. You like roulette? Russian style? Julie, big Julie. On a warm and giving night like this, how can you be so unforgiving? Well, I was, uh... I was just showing Rusty Charlie my new homemaker. Nathan! Uh, the... Nathan, it's my Nathan here! <laughs> Nathan! Oh, where's that Nathan? Could this be he? Nathan, <laughs> you are here. Who are all these uh, things? Ah, uh, sweetheart. Darling, sugar. 
these nice people are the cast of the show. We're getting ready to do a big number. Oh, that's great. No, 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 honey, you don't understand. In the show, you ain't in this number. Well, I am tonight. Do you mind? <laughs> Now, who will testify? It is wonderful to see our mission graced with so many evil-looking sinners. Now, who would like to testify? Who will give testimony? Uh, <coughs> we will now hear testimony from... Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Get up, short ass! Short ass! Well, that's what they wrote! Well, it, uh... It came to me kind of funny, like, you know, like, uh, like in a dream. Yeah, that's it. Like in a dream. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night I got on a boat to heaven. And by some chance, I had brought my dice along. And there I stood. And I hollered, someone fade me. But those passengers, they knew right from wrong. For the people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Or the devil will drag you under by the sharp lapel of your checkered coat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. I sailed away on that little boat to heaven, and by some chance, found a bottle in my fist, and there I stood, nicely passing out the whiskey. But those passengers were bound to resist. And I said to myself, sit down. You're on a heavenly trip. And I said to myself, sit down, sit down, sit down. You'll scuttle the ship, or the devil will drag you under by the yellow tie on your wicked throat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down and rock on the boat. And as I laughed at those passengers to heaven, a great big wave came and washed me overboard. And as I sank and I hollered, someone save me. That's the moment I woke up. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And I said to myself, sit down. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. And I said to myself, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Or the devil will drag you under. With a sin so heavy, you'll never float. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking a boat. Sit down, you're rocking, sit down, you're rocking, sit down, you're rocking a boat. Sit down, you're rocking the boat.
said, sit down. Sit down, you're rocking a boat. And the people all said, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking a boat. Or oh, the devil will drag you under. With a sense so heavy, you'll never float. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. All this time, all this money, money better than even money. That the guys only do it for some guys. Only do it for some Life is blondes, laughs, brunettes. Life is placing winning bets. Life is hello, not goodbye. Life is shoestrings that tie. Life is Sydney Harbour full of boats. Smiles from everyone. A weekend uh, at surface paradise. A little joy to juveniles. When it's fun, up QE2 underneath the harbor bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ridgy Ditch. And I'm gonna make them up the same way as Ricky always did. Yeah, life is a QE under a bicentennial sky. And a goodbye band passing by. Mm, tropical sky. Hey, hey, hey! It's Jamie Riggin, the orchestra, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Don Lane. How about we bring out everybody who participated in this? A great tribute to a great performer. How about it? Here, come on out, gang. Let's go. Carol Summers, all the kids, hungry be bad. Life is music from the heart. Life's a beautiful orchestra about to start. Life is honey, it's jam. Life and is everything, everything I am. And it's honey and it's jam. And it's everything we am. Life is honey and it's jam. And it's everything that Ricky has. It's a honey or it's jam. And it's With a little help from the man from inside, man inside. I, mm. I was a lonely one, wondering what went wrong. Why love had gone, and 
left me lonely. I, I was so confused. I felt like I'd just been used. Then you came to me, and my loneliness left me. I used to think I was tied to a heartache. That was a heartbreak. been lonely too and you showed me how to ease the pain and I never dreamed there'd be someone to hold me until you told me fantastic audience we hope you liked it we hope he liked it and we love you all stay on for a great night thank you Since I found